G'day mates, Captain Doug here. Welcome to Houseboats 101. Last episode, we looked at the engines found in a houseboat, both for propulsion and for generating power. In this episode, we'll examine the systems that control how the boat moves through the water. We'll look at steering, engine controls and thrusters. There are two types of steering systems found on houseboats. Smaller and older houseboats will have a mechanical system where long steering cables run the whole length of the boat. Most houseboats nowadays use hydraulic steering. In this type of steering system, each of the helm stations will have a hydraulic pump behind the steering wheel. Two hydraulic hoses will run from the back of this pump to the one behind the lower helm steering wheel and then down to the engines at the back of the boat. At the engine, these pipes are attached to a power assist pump driven by the engine and then to a steering cylinder that moves the outdrives by a long steel bar. So ultimately, this power assisted steering system is pretty much the same you would probably have in your car. Power assisted steering allows the boat to be manoeuvred almost by one finger. That's an 80 foot, 30 ton boat being moved by your little pinky. Hydraulic steering does need some maintenance. Well, more like monitoring. If you get a leak in the system, obviously that will need mechanical attention and the system will need to be bled of air once repaired. To monitor the fluid in the system, there is really no indicator other than the steering does not work correctly, which will usually start at the upper helm. So I just remove the fill cap on the upper helm and check to see if I can see fluid in the helm pump. If it is filled with fluid, we're okay. If it is slightly down, you can add fluid using a special adapter for the bottle of hydraulic fluid. The whole idea of this is not to introduce air into the system while topping it up. Again, there are two systems commonly in use to control the engines on a houseboat. The first is a mechanical cable driven system, much like the mechanical steering system. Our first houseboat had a system like this. However, our second houseboat had a combination of mechanical and hydraulic system that used a pre-pressurized hydraulic accumulator tank to assist with the gear changes. Mechanical systems usually have separate controllers for shifting gears and throttling the engines. I had two boats with this type of engine control and I found it very difficult to control the forward and reverse engine speeds on separate controls. These systems were superseded in later houseboats by a microcontroller system. This basically is fly-by-wire in that electrical control signals from the shift throttle levers at the helm station are sent to control boxes in the engine bay. These control boxes convert the electrical signals into mechanical movement and use short cables to control engine speed and gear selection. This not only allows for a much smaller controller footprint on the helm stations, but allows the captain to virtually control both engine speed and direction with one hand. Of course, the microcontroller system requires power to operate, and it gets this from the house 12 volt batteries we saw in episode three. Finally, let's discuss thrusters. There are a lot of opinion amongst houseboaters about the use and efficacy of thrusters on a houseboat. A houseboat has a lot of windage area. That is, unlike an iceberg, there is more of the boat out of the water than in the water. Consequently, wind can be a captain's nemesis. 
The large side surface of a houseboat can act a lot like a sail. If the wind is coming from a side direction, a houseboat will tend to move in the opposite direction. Unfortunately, this direction is usually the way you don't want the boat to go. Once a houseboat starts to move sideways, it's very hard to convince it to stop. After all, the main engines are there to move the boat mainly in a forward or reverse direction. Main engines provide little help in moving a boat sideways. It is possible to pivot a houseboat around the stern using two engines in opposite directions, but we will look at that in the next episode. This is where thrusters can help, but only to a limited extent. Thrusters are extra engines designed to move the bow or stern sideways. They are in fixed positions and do not steer like the main engines. They are also constant speed, so it's more an on-again, off-again pulsing operation that the captain uses to move the boat. OK, so I said they're only of limited help when there's a wind. Thrusters will barely help against a full broadside wind of more than 5 to 10 knots. So don't think they're a substitute for learning how to dock in a wind without the help of thrusters. What thrusters are good at is helping the captain position the bow of the boat ready to enter the slip when docking, particularly if your boat only just fits into the slip widthwise. There are basically two types of thruster systems, hydraulic and electric. Hydraulic thrusters can be more powerful than electric thrusters. However, unless fitted to the houseboat during manufacture, they require significant mechanical work to be added to a boat. A hydraulic thruster system requires a mechanical power source to provide the energy to the thruster propellers. This power comes from the generator motor. A hydraulic pump is mounted on the back end of the generator alternator, so the generator motor must be running to turn the pump to generate the hydraulic pressure. Also added is a large hydraulic accumulator tank. Finally, hydraulic pipes must be run down the boat to the bow thrusters and shorter ones to the stern thruster. Surprisingly, this whole system can be retrofitted to a boat that does not have thrusters, even while the boat is still in the water. This boat's owner has opted to use external bow thruster motors but some houseboats are built with a thruster tunnel in the bow, allowing the motor to be in an enclosed tunnel that opens on each side of the boat. There are advantages and disadvantages to hydraulic thruster systems. The advantages, more power. As I said, hydraulic thrusters can have more power than electrical thrusters. As long as the boat's generator can produce enough power, a hydraulic thruster can run continuously if necessary. And some of the disadvantages. Being a majority mechanical system, there is potential for more issues mechanically. Unless installed during manufacture, installation of a hydraulic system is more difficult and requires an expert. A hydraulic system does require the generator to be running the whole time the thrusters are required, increasing fuel usage and generator hours. Operating a hydraulic thruster can require significant power from the generator motor. This will restrict appliances that can draw power from the generator at the same time. Externally mounted hydraulic motors do make significantly more noise than internally mounted ones. The other thruster option is an electrical system. Electrical thrusters use submersible electric motors to move the boat. These motors are usually 24 volt DC motors, so extra batteries must be installed to allow for their operation. However, the bow and stern thrusters can be completely independent from each other, having separate batteries and controllers in each place. Similar to the hydraulic systems, the electrical system uses wireless helm controllers to communicate to each thruster control. This is the type of system I chose for my boat. 
for all the advantages offered by the electrical system. And despite the disadvantages, let's define the disadvantages first. For our 80-foot boat, I had to get the most powerful electrical thrusters made by the manufacturer, and they are still less powerful than a hydraulic system would be. Electrical thruster motors consume prodigious amounts of current in a small volume and are thus limited in how long they can run without a cool down period. That's it. Those are the only disadvantages I can think of. So what are the advantages? Despite requiring some inventive positioning, I installed these on my boat myself while it was in the water. I'm not saying some electrical knowledge isn't helpful, but the installation instructions were good enough. My thrusters are mounted under the front deck platform and under the swim platform. These positions do not require drilling any holes near the water line in the hull, just in surfaces well out of the water. Because each thruster has its own battery supply, there is no draw on the boat's generator, so the generator does not even have to be running. Of course, the thruster batteries do need to be recharged, but that can be done on dock power after returning to the dock. Electrical thrusters can be quieter than hydraulic thrusters in most cases. It really depends on how and where they are mounted. Our stern thruster is so quiet, I sometimes have to look back to see if the stern is reacting to the thruster. Our electrical thruster system for both bow and stern was about 60% the equivalent cost of a similar hydraulic system. Of course, the hydraulic system cost includes the mechanic for the day and to do the installation, whereas my cost does not count the four or five hours it took me to install the system. Any repairs required to the system, and I have caused some, which we won't mention now, can be done DIY as well. Repairs to a hydraulic system will require an experienced mechanic. Our bow thruster can retract out of the water once I've finished using it, reducing drag and allowing the boat to beach without it being in the way. So you can see, for me, the pros definitely outweighed the cons. My opinion on whether thrusters are required or not. For me, this is the first out of five houseboats I've owned that has thrusters. So I already knew how to dock a houseboat without the use of thrusters. However, this is also the biggest houseboat I've owned. And the bigger they get, the harder they handle. All I can say is, my blood pressure during docking is way lower now that I've fitted thrusters, bow and stern, than before I had them. You may find an 80-foot houseboat without thrusters, but you'll also find a captain with a harried look on his face while docking. There is some discussion between captains on whether you need both bow and stern thrusters, or whether you can use just one or the other. In my experience, I use the bow thruster to get the bow pointed to the centre of the slip when docking and the stern thruster to control the angle of the boat as it enters the slip. I keep the main engines at dead centre once I go to thruster positioning, just using them to control forward and reverse motion of the boat. Well that's it for looking at the various control systems on a houseboat. Join us in episode 7 when we'll look at piloting a houseboat. We'll examine undocking and docking procedures, navigating open water and beaching the boat. Cheers mate. <laughs>